Hey everyone, today's video is for anyone that has ever experienced something called stress. And that's because in this video, we're going to be talking about the nerve that is responsible for determining how well or how not well your body responds to stress. And that nerve is the vagus nerve. Now you may have heard of the vagus nerve because it's all the craze right now. If you go and do a Google search on the vagus nerve, you're gonna get millions of hits on life and biohacking tips regarding the vagus nerve. But what does the vagus nerve actually do and how does it play a role in your kiddo's health and your health? Well, there's tons of research out there on the vagus nerve and there's so much more we keep learning on what it does, but the thing we know for a fact is that it plays a massive role in the nervous system and affects things like sleep, digestion, and emotional health. I'm Dr. Rachel from Sprout Family Chiropractic, and what we see time and time again in practice as we're diving deep into a patient's full picture of health, whether that be an infant, a grade school kid, a teenager, or an adult, is when they're struggling with things on the outside like anxiety or ADHD in an infant, it might be colic or just fussiness. Um, when they're struggling with those things on the outside, oftentimes they're struggling with the basic building blocks of health on the inside as well. In the vast majority of those cases, we tend to see that they're struggling with some of those basic things um, in health like sleep and digestion and constipation, emotional regulation, immune function, etc. And so what we know is that the vagus nerve plays a really big role in those basic building blocks of health. So, you know, when those basic building blocks aren't working as well as they should be working, then it's really hard to expect that those big brain health things like focus and anxiety can be doing what they need to be doing. So today we're going to be diving deep into the vagus nerve and talking about the different things that it's responsible for. Well, the vagus nerve is extremely complex, but it can be simplified into the nerve that is responsible for the parasympathetic or the rest and digest side of the nervous system. So the very first thing we can say is that the vagus nerve is responsible for rest, and we can group sleep and meditation into that same category. And so if you know, you've tried all the sleep tips and tricks and you've taken magnesium and melatonin and you're still not getting that good restful sleep and feeling re-energized and recharged at the beginning of the day, it's probably because your vagus nerve is turned down and not as activated as it needs to be. Now, the other piece of that for the vagus nerve is digest, so rest and digest. And so we can put things like digest, motility, and also at the end of the day, it comes down to just poop, you know? So how is our gut function? How is our, you know, are we chronically constipated? Whether we be a kid or an adult, you know, the vagus nerve plays a huge role in digestion and making sure that things are moving along how they're supposed to. Um, another huge part that the vagus nerve is responsible for is our immune function. And a big piece of that immune function is our inflammation or inflammatory response. So we can put inflammation right here. So the vagus nerve is responsible for determining what an appropriate inflammatory response is. So when we're dealing with things like chronic allergies or risk chronic respiratory infection, infections or chronic autoimmune conditions, a lot of the times that has to do with our body's inflammatory response and whether it is the appropriate amount. And so the vagus nerve plays a huge role in that immune function inflammatory response. Now you can see with all three of these things down here that this happens when the vagus, all of these things work how they're supposed to when the vagus nerve is functioning how it's supposed to. And that means that the rest and digest piece of everything is working how it should. Now you can imagine if we are in a sympathetic or fight or 
fight or flight protective state, then you know your body's not gonna be worried about sleeping or whether it's digesting that meal that you just ate, or and it's not even really you know concerned about you know protecting itself from flus or colds or anything like that because it's really gearing up for a big battle that it's going to face. Um, and so that's why when we are stuck in fight or flight, the vagus nerve doesn't. Uh, activate how it's supposed to. Now the vagus nerve is a sensory nerve and so it's also responsible for something called sensory processing. So whether you're an adult or a kiddo, you know, uh, dealing with things like the noise is too loud, you know, lights are too bright, um, textures such as, you know, food or the tag on your clothing bothers you, the vagus nerve is responsible for sensory processing and when it's not firing or activating how it's supposed to, then we start to see those sensory struggles. Um, as we've learned more and more about the vagus nerve, we've also learned that it is responsible for our social um, communication and speech development. And so um, piggybacking on that, we know that the vagus nerve plays a huge role in emotional regulation and mood control. So, you know, when it, see, when it feels like we're always at the end of our rope or our kiddo is always on the verge of a meltdown, um, oftentimes that's just the vagus nerve being exhausted and not being able to function how it's supposed to. And so we really don't have anything left to combat that feeling of just needing to, you know, have a meltdown, whether we be a kiddo or an adult. And finally, we know that another branch of the vagus nerve is responsible for cognition and learning and focus. And so if you feel like you just constantly have brain fog and you have that heavy feeling um, that's just that, you know, you can't quite shake, um, oftentimes that's just a sign that your vagus nerve is tapped out and you can't get that mental clarity that you need. So, you know, the thing about, the beautiful thing about the vagus nerve playing a part in all of these functions is that when it's turned up and functioning properly, all of these functions are happening how they're supposed to. Now the opposite is true if it's turned down. If that vagus nerve is turned down, then that instead of that rest and digest, we get that fight or flight protective state. And you know, that isn't always a bad thing. If you're playing sports or taking a test or running from a bear, um, then you need that side of the nervous system. But I can bet that probably 100% of parents do not want their child's nervous system to act like it's running for a bear when it's time to wind down for bedtime. So what are things that turn that vagus nerve down then? Now, truthfully, it's as simple as stress and different stressors that we face at different parts of development. It can start as early as fear and anxiety during pregnancy. It can be intervention and birth trauma during labor and delivery. It can be childhood falls and traumas. It can be inflammatory foods that we eat or different toxins and chemicals in our environment. Or it can be health and family, social stress and anxiousness. Those are just to name a few of the different stressors that turn that vagus nerve down. If you're curious where your kiddo's vagus nerve activity is or where your vagus nerve activity is, we can measure that. And that's really the first step is finding where exactly your vagus nerve um, how it's functioning currently so that we can create a customized care plan for you um, so that we can get that parasympathetic rest and digest vagus nerve activity where we want it to be and it can help with a multitude of challenges. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send us a DM. We'd love to get those answered for you. Also, if you found this video helpful and know a mom, dad, or other family that needs to learn about the vagus nerve, please share this video with them. And finally, if you want to learn more about the vagus nerve, feel free to head to our website and check out our blog. We have a search bar. You can type in vagus nerve and, you'll f and it'll pop up every article we've ever written on the vagus nerve and you can dive deep into that. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one.